was not even part of my life. Maybe I would have wasted time. Lord, bless this business. If, if I get money, then I can take care of the ulcers. And the business is not every, anywhere in his plan. This one I'm talking about. The best thing to do was to seek him. And when he came in, he reorganized my life. He reorganized my priorities. He got rid of my burdens. Even those things which were not part of my plan, he removed them. And he filled me with that which is in his plan. That is why I'm saying to you, don't fight. Don't struggle. Don't try this to and the other way. Don't try this and the other way. Let us all turn to one way. Let us seek the Lord. Let us seek him. Just him. Once he comes in and has his way, he will make the difference. Amen. Amen. How many people here feel that you really love the Lord with all your life? You love him. And all along you have been giving yourself to him. Him. The Lord bless you so much. But if you really loved him and you had given why him why are you in the mess that you were in? Isn't he faithful? Why hasn't he helped us? Has he told has he been a liar? If you realize that he hasn't helped us, it means where we are, that's where we are supposed to be. Our relationship is not the way it's supposed to be. Don't try to build on the former things. Humble yourself. Pour out everything. Empty yourself. And take up the first and most important thing of life. That is to seek to know him. You put it differently. Before your work comes in, your family, your church, your friends, your people, and your things. Let God get his, a place first. In your daily program, Bring him in. Before you can fill in any other thing. All these things that the people say. I don't have time. I want to pray but I'm really busy. First empty your life out. Fill it in God. Let him be filled first in your life. Your time. Wherever we say. I want to pray. But I get so tired. By the time you reach home you are tired. Before you fill your life life with anything Take that makes you tired. Yeah. Fill your life first with God. Change your priorities. Let him become the only priority. Everything, Everything else an addition. Let him become the center of your life. And let things be ordered around him. That way, your life is going to change. You are going to discover automatically there are some, some some things you're going to come out of. Separated from and to him. Yes, we have Praise Jesus. Yesterday I told you that go on the thing what are those things about that can make me know him? That can cause me to discover who he is and discover his presence. I want to give you an opportunity. I want you to put up your hand and tell me one. You shouted right high. Can someone tell us? Mm -hmm. One of them? Yes. You, you shout, shout, shout. To wait upon the Lord mm -hmm. in everything. Mm -hmm. Reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. The positive attitude of Christ to overcome the powers of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Deep faith. Mm -hmm. 
totally dependent on the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. To surrender everything unto the Lord. Yes, brother? Holiness. Mm -hmm. Prayer. You? Mm -hmm. Giving thanks to him in all circumstances, yes? To what? Oh, may disturb us. Kakati kamba buze yunechila. Yebichi. Bichi, ha angavi na vingi njio vingi zokuwa luka agava lukumi. Naye bichi, ebi yinza o kuquenchinga. What are those things that may quench? Presence ya katonda jituli. The presence of the Lord in our lives. Abadha sembe na nojida anga wu. Somebody who has been oh, growing close wanji. and you feel. O kuvusa vusa. Disobedience. Oh, ha wata mama suga mama chacha kuingi zaji Every was every charm. Teddy can't tell you. Ah, I'm going to go now. Oh, no, no. Mm-hmm. Two. Oh, wait, you can't go to the gym. Oh, wait, you can't go to the gym. Oh, wait, you can't go to the gym. Ah, so will it be. Past. That's it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you this. I could go into the scriptures and begin to give you a, a, a very concrete ways that we can come close to God. Because it's all spelled out in the Bible. Amen. But to do that, we would have to get to the place of commitment. One, commitment to God and commitment to each other. That we are not just talking about these things. We are going to do them. Our Uganda, brethren, even the least thing, like holding on to the word, when you count its costs, what does it mean? To hold fast on the word of God. Amina. Amina. That's where you have to say that I have to put aside time to read the Bible. How many times have you played a uh, vow to read the Bible but you don't do it? What's that that takes you away from doing it? Why do you become inconsistent in reading? The Bible? That's where we start asking ourselves over the What are those things that distract me Bible? and take me away from the Bible? Which have pledged to read. And when they uh, distract me, why am I distracted? Is there something I really love more than I love him? Lest it becomes an idol to me. Yabafe. And what are those things that cause me to push forward the time of reading the Bible which I had set? When I read the Bible, do I enjoy it? Or I don't? If um, it's not enjoyable to me, why is it? And when the Bible talks to me, do I take the word? Do I obey the word? 
Because the Lord said we, we that if you obey me, if you obey my word, then my father will love you. We shall come unto you, and I will come unto you. We shall come unto you. We shall come unto you. We shall come unto you. We And I'll show my Are we not looking for the Lord? Are we not seeking him? He has said when you obey my word. I will love you. My father will love you. We will come to you. I will manifest myself to you. And my father and I will make our abode with you. Look at that free promise. And what more do you want? Obey the word. And you get him. He will abide with you. And he will be with you. And he will reveal himself unto you. By the battle in, the battle in that place. I don't want to go deep in that formula. But I want to give you a formula today. Where we can begin from. Redeeming the time. Amina. Amina. But we are going to take this journey. If we are to take this journey. We have to redeem time. Or would they? We have to redeem time. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Very quickly, I just want to give you a few scriptures. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. We read it. Did we? No. no. Matthew 13, verse 45. Matthew 13, verse 45. For the six, it says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and hid, and for the joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking, a be seeking beautiful pearls, who, when he had found one, one pearl of great price, he went and sold all that he had and he bought it. Jesus is saying, yes, when you discover the one thing that can change your life, drop everything else and go for it. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh -huh. Praise Jesus. I want to hear your voice. Yes, you are Amen. Listen carefully. Yesterday I gave you a testimony of the sister in Berlin who worked with Carlos and Aconia. This same sister gave me another testimony. She went to Switzerland and she was in a, 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 a youth conference that was so dynamic that her faith rose so high. Her commitment to God rose so high. And her hunger for God to use her her rose so high. And in that conference, in that heightened state, she said to the Lord, Oh God, Oh God, I give you my life that you may use me for your glory and for the love of Christ to be revealed to the people. Please use me. Please use me. She cried to God and she felt the assurance God was going to use her. When she went back to Berlin, she was living, I mean, she stayed in a flat. And she just, as she came to her flat, the pain of the lost souls in that flat hit her. Said, oh God, give me these people. Give me my flat for an inheritance in the kingdom of God. And she, un she got out of her car, took her suitcase. As she went up, a woman came into the flat and the lift. And this is a woman she knew. She was sickly. And many times she would be in, in hospital. And as they were in the flat, something said to her, start with her. And said, ah, God, not now. When I've just come back, not now. So she didn't say anything. And she went. 
into her flood. That night, she had no peace. When she was trying to say to the Lord, Oh God, don't let me lose this. Please, I want you to use me. The prayer was not genuine. Something was coming up at the back. What do you mean? You say, I want to be used. The chance comes, you don't use it. Why do you ask me? You understand that? So she repented and said, Lord, another chance. I promise you, I'm going to be faithful. The next day, as she was driving away, one of the, the people staying in was going out. I said, can I give you a lift? She said, yes. So the old man came in. And as they were driving, he began to talk about his problems. And something said, start now. I said, but God, I'm driving. But the thing said, make a choice. So in the end, she said, by the way, do you know Jesus can help you? And the man did not even know who Jesus was. Say, who? Where is he? So she began to share. She began to tell him about Jesus. By the time they got to where he was going, he received the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. She felt so happy. She said, God, it works. The next day, I mean, when she came back, she found children in the lift. And one of them had an infirmity. I said, God, oh, please, I wish you could really heal him. And the Lord said, pray. So she talked wonderfully to the children. She said, can I pray for you? And she prayed. And nothing happened. The following day, the student came. Thank you. It's gone. The boy was healed. So the thing started. One after another, miracles were happening. God was answering prayer. People were getting saved. And she was so excited. She told testimonies. Other young people began to rise up. Said, we also want to serve the Lord. Not in pulpits. In in our flats, in our, in our houses, in our streets. And she was still a, a pastor's secretary. But after about three months, she, she did not stop seeing the signs. She got so busy, she forgot all about it. After six months, by the way, I used to pray for the people and see them being healed. And I used to speak and they would get saved. She tried, no one would listen. She tried, and she would be afraid. So she gave up. And when we were in Berlin, she asked me, why? If God wants me to serve him, and I'm so sincere, I want to serve him, why does he allow me to forget? I totally forgot. I remember so many months later that I'm supposed to be praying for people and preaching the gospel. And as, as, as I said yesterday, I didn't have an immediate answer. But when I, was, when I went before the Lord, he brought it back to me. When, he, when she saw that God had started using her, how did she change her life? Did she give priority to that thing? Or did she continue living her normal life with an additional package of God's work? If you continue in your normal life, which you have been living without God using you, why do you expect he's going to continue using you? If he was pleased with that kind of life, why didn't he use you before? It means that life setting is not conducive to his working. So, discovering that God has now started working with me, should have sat down said, God, what must I do to move into this new dimension. How do I prioritize again? Reorder my life. Hallelujah. Amen. 
So do you understand what I'm telling you? When you discover something precious, give up the rest. Put it the, as a supreme. Then build the rest around it. I'm not saying give up your work, your marriage, or your responsibilities. But first of all, put them out of the picture. Put their God. Then let them find a place around God. In your day, let God get in first. Then your work, your family, your other things, find place. If you find the day is full, let some things stay out of the day. But God is in the day. Hallelujah. Now listen, beloved. First of all, the thing I've been telling you is change your priorities. I mean, I want to give you a word the Lord gave me yesterday morning. The Holy Spirit gave me this word as I was waiting upon him yesterday morning. He said, what you permit into your time is what you are permitting into your life. Because what you permit into your time is what you are going to become. Do you know, beloved, that your life on, on the earth is nothing but the time you spend on earth? If you spend a short time, they say his life was short. If someone dies, they say his life started on this date and ended on this date. What is the measuring unit? Time. Time is measured in years, in months, in weeks, in days, in hours, minutes, and seconds. And the time you spend on earth is the length of your life. So as the white, the English say time is money, I would say time is life. And whatever you permit in your time, you are sowing in your life. So what we permit in our lives, in our times, we are going to become it. If my time is watching bad movies, I'm going to become what bad movies produce. Because I'm sowing it into my time and it's becoming my life. If my time is spent in gossiping, slandering other people, that is what I'm becoming. I'm sowing. And don't be deceived. Whatever you sow, that is what you will reap. Because God cannot be mocked. Amen. Amen. If my time is sown in doubts, anxiety, wondering whether God is faithful, that is what I'm going to become. I'm going to become a doubtful person. Whatever we allow our time to be spent on, we are allowing our lives to be influenced that way. Does that make sense? It's something that needs really to be meditated upon again and again and again until it really crystallizes. I'm still studying it. It is already pointing to me some very, very serious areas I need to change. You know, one of my greatest problems is time. And yesterday, even after we came from the prayer mountain, or this morning, I was saying to the Lord, God, I want this to be a measuring line of my change. My time use. 
my time use. And I don't want to go too deep into that because it's still on the table. But I want to leave it with you. Now, I remember in 1988 when the Lord first visited my life supernaturally and began to work among us our small group. He said something to us which we did not take seriously. Yesterday it came back. And it looked so simple. The, the Lord said, said, make priorities and keep them before you. Then order the rest of your day around those priorities. Make a program of your day. Don't drift through life. Don't don't just go because time is going. Don't just react to whatever is happening. Don't be an accident in the day. Face the day with a plan. With a program. And be focused. Have a goal where you are going for that particular day. Plan your day. Program yourself. And leave not your life idle. Now it sounded good advice, but we didn't think it was important. It sounded like the white people do that. But of late, God has been showing me if you are in prayer and you seek the Lord for the program of your day, for the program of your week, I'm not talking about programming the human way. I'm talking about programming around God. A God-inspired program. It can have your times of prayer, word, meditation, everything. It can have your job, your family, your leisure, and everything. But let it be programmed. Hallelujah. Amen. And let there be peace in your heart that this is within the will of God. Now, after that, begin to walk the day. Now, give me your attention. Begin to walk the day. Every now and again, something is going to tempt you to change your program. Maybe brother so-and-so will come and say, what are you doing? Are you free? He say, um, what are you saying? Before you say yes, remember that you had programmed your day. What were you supposed to do in that Hallelujah. Time? Amen. Now you will feel your heart wants to go with him. But you know you have to do something. If you just check within, you will easily see whether is this God telling me to go or he is telling me to stay. With a programmed time, the voice of the Holy Spirit becomes sharper. There, there will be moments when you know that you know this is God asking me to change. Why? Because you contrast the two. The plan and what has come and the inner witness tells you clearly that is God. Then there are other times everything wants to go but when you check inside no, this is the flesh. This is the flesh. I know I should stay here. I know I must be doing this. Then you can stand around and say I'm sorry. I am committed. Everything within you is going to be disappointed. It wanted to go. But there's a program received in prayer before the Lord. And it says, No, you stay here. Sometimes, Something will draw you away. And everything within you says, what will they say? What will they think? And before you go, so, but who is telling me to go? The world. My world. The expectations. And if I go, I'm doing it at the expense 
of this thing in my program. So you can say, no, I will stay on this. Why? Because it is what helps me to know God. By the way, it may not even be Bible reading or prayer. It may be preparing your food. And yet, you know, if I don't prepare food now and go, I'll come back later when I start preparing food in the wrong time. By the time I finish, I'll be tired. By the time I get to prayer, I cannot pray. Mm -hmm. So you can check having a programmed life sharpens our discernment. It sharpens the voice of the Holy Spirit. You can tell who is speaking. Is it my flesh? Is it the world? Is it the devil? Or is it the Lord? Amen. I know that's not very easy. Because we have not disciplined ourselves in that. Amen. I want to finish. Amen. Amen. I want to finish. The first thing I've talked about set your priorities. Yaula, if you are going to be a good person, Amina, Yaula, if you are going to be a good person, the, 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 the most precious is that which helps you to draw close to God. Let the rest be built around There are many things in our life which are not useful. 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 Let us cut them off. And remember the, the tree that is not pruned. It does not bear good fruit. So start pruning off some of these things. It does not bear good fruit. 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 It does not bear Make a new program where that person is not here. Whatever he says, I want to come and tell him or her I'm going to do something. I wanted to have a phone. Will you call me later? I'm doing something. I'm committed. You are not telling a lie because you programmed yourself. This is going to cost us. But it will cost us good. Priorities, programming, very fast. Redeem time. Redeem time to be before the Lord. Just to give him some questions. Have you two? Ngama kubo agoku tu sembeza o kumpi na ye ati no kuingira o kumu manya. What things or what strategies may be in the Bible that the Lord has given us as ways that can draw us close unto knowing Him? Kwanga tuale se gulo tu se kudali rigamba. Because by yesterday we had reached a level of saying. That it's only the Lord that can help us. How many people have been working together with me the journey that we started? From Monday. How many people have joined in midway but you are determined to walk the, the journey? I know how many people have come just today you don't know what is going on. Bless them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now listen. How many people here feel you desire to go the way God is pointing to us? Amen. Amen. And yet you feel you don't have the strength. You don't have the willpower you don't know how to start. And you're wondering, I want it, but I don't even know where to, how to get started. Let me see your hands. Yes, she was well. Now, let me tell you something. It feels bad 
It feels bad to want to go all the way for the Lord. And yet you don't even know how to start. And yet you feel, even you feel, I don't have even the power. All along you determined you do say uh, the beginning. I will tell him this is what I will promise him. I'm going to make this vow before him. Amen. Amen. But you will reach somewhere and you say, Lord, now what should I convince you with? What should I promise you? I've promised everything and they not even to work. What kind of vow should I make? I've vowed everything and I've broken the vows. How many people feel uh, Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you something. That is a good place to be in. When you come to the end of yourself, you are ready for surrender to the Lord. That's a good, good, good place to be. Don't you be discouraged at all. That's the best place to lay it all before the Lord. Always where we end, that's where God starts from. Where you feel you are done, you don't know how to begin. That's where the Father begins. And once he starts to work, deep within you know that this is the Lord. I did not have the way to begin from. And it helps you to keep you low, humble, and yielded. Yes, we have as well. Therefore, I want to encourage you. Whoever feels have come to the end of themselves. If you feel you don't have no more strength to push on, thank the Lord who has brought you that far. Amen. That's a wonderful place to be. But how long? It has taken so long to reach to bring that far. All that shows us how far our strength goes. But now listen. The Bible says Jeremiah 29 verse 11 I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are not thoughts of evil. Not even of failure. Can you listen to that? God says, I know the thoughts I think towards you. They are not thoughts of evil. Not even of failure. But they are thoughts of hope to give you the desired end. Hallelujah. Simon, come. Let us let us Imagine that this is the place where God wants Simon to be. Amen. Amen. But unfortunately, Simon is not where he is supposed to be. Simon is here. Amen. Amen. And when God looks at him, he's not thinking of judging him. He's not thinking of casting him away. He's thinking, if only he could just turn around and take just a few steps, I would get him back to his place. Hallelujah. Amen. But instead of Simon going doing what God has said, he turns the other side. And then he moves more steps. He is a bit farther away from where he's supposed to be. But God is not missing a single detail. God knows the steps he took. God knows how far he is. And God says, I know the thoughts I think towards you. Thoughts of failure. They are not thoughts of judgment. They are thoughts of hope to bring you back to the desired end. Unfortunately, Simon goes further. And people begin talking about him. And he gets annoyed. He says, No, can't you call it a dollar? He goes even further. 
When he is there, he finds people who draw him and he is drawn further. And he says, it's so so. Uh, oh, that brother, he needs prayers, but these days, he is even no longer fellowshipping. Amen. Amen. And brethren, let go of him. Forgive, well, give, up, give up on him. And they ask you, don't you meet him somewhere there? That's where he is. You can see what he is involved in. Everyone says, oh. Ah, he had a potential. He was promising the devil is a the devil. The Lord is not missing every single thing. His soul is painful. It's traveling and crying. It's weeping. But all that time, the Simon, Lord is saying, Simon, I'm not thinking of your death. I'm not thinking of your destruction. I'm not thinking of your total demeaning. I know the thoughts I think about. They are not thoughts of evil. The devil thinks evil towards you. He comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I come that you may have life and have it in abundance. My thoughts towards you, my plans towards you, are plans of hope to do what? To give you the desired end. If only you would seek me, if only you would wait upon me, I would direct you. I would show you where to go. I would begin to direct you and I would guide your footsteps to bring you back to the desired end. Hallelujah. Amen. What does that show us? That whatever, wherever we are, however far we are, however fallen we are, however messed up you are, however messed up you are, call unto me, and I will answer you and show you great and unsearchable things. Hallelujah. Amen. Even when, Nebuba. listen to me, Uliza. even when Nebuba. a prophet of God comes Nebuba. and pronounces judgment over you, Nebuba. and is not a false prophet, is speaking the heart of God, Nebuba. even when Nebuba. in your sleep Nebuba. God comes and shows you judgment. Nebuba. The Bible says, Nebuba. If I say to a sinner, you will surely die. And yet that sinner turns away from his sins and does what is right. I will repent of the judgment and I will do good unto him. If I say to a sinner, you will surely die. And yet that sinner turns around away from his sins and does what is right. I will repent of the judgment and I will do good unto him. So, beloved, it doesn't matter what has happened in the past. You can still be restored. It is possible. Now, God bless you. Now, there may be consequences in other areas, but where it concerns eternal life, God is faithful. A broken soul and a contrite soul. He will never cast away. Yes, we have Praise Jesus. Why am I saying to you this? Because it's very important to lay hold of this anchor if you are going to seek the Lord. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. Secondly, if you are not convinced by that, you try so many ways to try to help yourself. 
Yet they will not benefit. They therefore have to reach that level where Paul reached. And they said, All those things that were prophesied, I cast them aside. So that I may get Jesus first. But even after getting him, and I walked with him, time came. And even the rest, I counted it nothing. And I put it down. So that I may get Christ. Christ. To win Christ. That I may have the righteousness. Which does not come out of obeying the Lord. But which comes out of the faith that Christ has for I want me. you to listen to that. That I may have the righteousness. Which is not of the Lord. But that which comes out of the faith of Christ. Christ. Towards me. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. What is that righteousness so that is of the I'm not talking of the law of Moses. But I believe that everyone here, if you search yourself, you realize ha. That I have this, I have this, I have the other, and even this. God says I should be separated from this. Okay. There is the, that righteousness which comes from not doing evil. Don't steal, don't kill, don't commit adultery, don't covet, don't falsely accuse, don't rope. All that. We can avoid them and make a righteousness. But Paul has said that I'm tired even of that kind of righteousness. I want to get the righteousness which is not of the law, but which comes out of God. First, unto he who can cleanse me and purify me more than I can do it myself. After knowing that Christ can do exceedingly abundant that which I can do he said now I'm letting go of everything I'm letting go of everything I'm getting hold of only one life mission that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. I want to have the fellowship of his suffering. He who gave up everything and gained everything. I want to have fellowship with him to give up everything and gain everything. I'm even willing to be joined with him in his death. I want to die to everything because I know that's the way I will gain a place among those who will resurrect. Paul said, I don't want anything. I don't want to big ministry. I'm not looking for big ministry. I'm prosperity. I'm looking, looking for prosperity. I'm not looking for comfort. But I want just one thing. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That's what I'm going to work for. Praise God. How many people say that way I've reached, I can't help myself. I don't know how I can raise them. I don't even have the strength to raise them. If he does not help, I've come to the end of my life. Amen. I want to see your hand. Yes, Praise Jesus. If you reach that far, brethren, you've reached on arrived at two things. You may decide to seek a way and to get all your energy, strength and pour it is that way which you've decided to make. All you can decide Everything that you could have done, you let go. And you say, let me seek him. Who can work, work in me and accomplish it. Amen. Let me give you two examples. When I was getting a 
Katrina Company. We had a company. It right and overseas trade connections. Which you used to call by that name. I was responsible for seeking for ways how we can earn money. To akola export export ni to exporting abi into from Uganda kwitu alabuero. Want to want wanted to export things out of Uganda. Maybe to gasi yango. But things were not. Government yari echo sa chusa manteka wili kasera. Now and again the government would change the laws. Maybe to gasi yango. Things were not easy. Gati Uganda chia in a very bad reputation. And Uganda's reputation was still very bad. Etuwa ya gaku dealing na Uganda. No one wanted to deal with Uganda. Kale chini tu chini simbinga chini pisu za dalabubi. So the issue of money real troubled me. Banange. My friends. Abalinga ba kamabange. Who are my bosses? Abalwa teka mwen simbi. Who are we injected it in money. They always desired to say breakthrough. I had dreams and then it's exciting. I had big exciting dreams, but they were not breaking through. So the issue of money was irritating. Another thing that was irritating, I had a problem of ulcers. And wherever it would come up, I would be bedridden for days. It would really be bad. It would really be bad. Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, I would band myself up. By the time would come when I feel it's not enough, I wanted to fold myself and press in this part of my body. So I would lean up upon the wall, put my head down on the bed, and put my body up the wall, so that it would curve. And I try to press in that pain. I, had a, uh, I was already, I mean, I'd finished my education, I was working. But there would be moments that the pain would be so intense, no, I would cry openly. I mean, that's how bad it was. If anything, if anyone could get me healing, I would run for it. Then, the third thing, for about two months, I had started feeling a pain in my chest. It was like someone had put a, a, a big pillar in my chest coming out of my back. And I had to make very short breaths. If I pulled a lot of breath inside, it would So I had to make very, very short breaths. And when I would, I would be sleeping, I would wake up in the night gasping for breath. But and to try to get up, it would pierce. To lean back, it would pierce. To try and turn over, it would pierce. And yet I need air. So sometimes I would try two, three times before succeeding. And then, in the end, I had to force myself to go through all the pain. But at least try and get up. And by the time I get up, my whole body is in pain. And then I cannot really breathe. I have to make very short breaths. When I, I tried to go in the hospital, they didn't find anything. When I went home, they told me, hey, by the way, hey. even your father has got that pain now. And even your brother and one of your sisters. It's the spirit of your grandfather. You have to, you've got to go to the burial ground and appease the spirits. So that was the third problem. And then the fourth. Remember, I was not born again. I was a good, good reader of any book, any topic, any field. I could enjoy the dullest book in the world. So, whatever book I lay hold on, I would read it to the end. And I was a very fast reader. So, one night, I went home to see my sister. And there was a book on the table. 
is it three o'clock in the morning? Written by Dennis Bennett. Dennis, Dennis Bennett in the I thought, America. what is this talking about? Three o'clock in the morning. I took it. I think it's nine o'clock in the morning or three o'clock in the morning. Something like that. I took it home around 10 and I began reading it and I didn't put it down until I finished it around 5 a.m. But my life was on fire by the time I finished. It was the testimony of Pastor Dennis Bennett of how he met a couple who were Episcopalians the Episcopal Church is like the Anglican Church in America. in America. And they had been filled with the Holy Spirit. And they were speaking in other tongues. And there was a lot of strife in the church. They were trying to push them out. But nobody could have the courage to push them out because they were, they were acting so differently, so loving, so holy. And so full of joy. So after a long time, Pastor Dennis Bennett came near them and asked them what was, had happened. They told him about the Holy Spirit and they said, do you want us to pray for you, Pastor? And when they prayed for him, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I was so charged with mm. fire. I had never felt, I had never heard of a person in our time being filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in other tongues like the apostles spoke. And I said, God, if you can fill me with the Holy Spirit and I speak with another tongue which no man has taught me, whatever you want, you can do with my life. Hallelujah. Amen. So I asked my secretary, have you ever heard of people who are filled in with the Holy Spirit in Uganda? He said, mm, I don't know, but I hear people talk about Kaiwa. I said, oh, don't tell me that false prophet. Father told us, the reverend, that that is a false prophet. Tell me someone else. Say, they hear Kayanja there. The lunch hour. That they, they pray for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So from that day, I stopped going for lunch. Every lunch time, I would go for this fellowship. And I would look at these people. Looking at them to see who is filled with the Holy Spirit. Try and, trying to compare with what I read in the Bible. Sometimes I would see people looking up in the air, smiling, and I say, I think that one has got. <laughs> there are some people who used to look funny. <laughs> so many things. Then one day, but Rumu, Brother Francis, is this Francis Mahimba? Natamba. <laughs> Came on a that day they were no great preachers, so he preached. And he said, The Lord talked to me. <laughs> One of the things that I hated most was the gospel of miracles. Those things that I had no place for that. And if they preached about sin, I would say, yeah, that's the gospel. But the reason I had hated all that, it's because they were hitting my religion, the Catholic religion. And I... Mm. I, I didn't like it. But when he came on the stage, the Lord told me that whatever anyone will ask today, he'll get it in seven days. And you understand that the Lord is God is living, and you follow him. And I said, Lord, I've taken a month coming to you. I feel I'm tired of these people. Now, this is where I'll prove it. I'm going to pray that kind of prayer he's going to pray. If it does not work in seven days, this is the last time coming in this place. 
It was a Monday. He said, lift up your hand. Ask the Lord whatever you want. And I said, I business said uh, the business is bad to love. Breakthrough in business? Should I ask for breakthrough in business? Alsas in anger. I've got a problem with ulcers. That you hear these ulcers? How about this thing that pierces me? But after all this, I said, no. Let me ask for the Holy Spirit. Because once I get here, I'll ask for this. They will go. Before, I, uh, when I was just about to ask for the prayer, I remembered that this was said that you first get born again and you get the Holy Spirit. And being born again means you have to leave the uh, Catholic Church. I said you no. Know. I won't ask for this. But okay, Lord. If you want that I get saved. Okay, this is what I must do. Save me in seven days. If you really you in seven days. But I don't want to to if you don't in seven days. These men are liars. I will not come here again. It was a Monday. She was there, I had an appointment in the university. I went to full gospel. After that, I went to full gospel. I know Brother Paul, one of my uncles, is not full gospel. Why not? I had read about that book and the full gospel fellowship. I had read about that book and the full gospel fellowship. I went and talked to the people in the same office. I asked him many questions. I had read the Bible over cover and over to cover. 16 times before getting it. And wherever he tried to preach me, I would say, I would I would quote it, the book and the verse. Time came and he couldn't tell, say anything. And he asked me, what do you want? I told him, tell me. Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? And he said, yes. And I asked him, do you speak in tongues? He said, yes. <laughs> it's a long journey. And it, it made me confess forcefully. I just did it to get rid of him. And I went to him and I said, I have no more problems to get rid of him. I felt nothing with him. I did not feel any joy. I did not feel any heat. There was not, nothing different. I went down in my office, down on Rome Street. That's, that's when the Lord started talking to me. The, voice. And the voice told me, you've been born again. I said, no, not yet. I did not feel any heat. I did not feel any joy. I felt nothing. I'm not yet born again. After some, he will come back. You are born again. Second time. Third time. Fourth time. Even in the Driver, taxi, wherever the taxi would break, no, I would hear that voice, wanguka. audible voice. It would say, believe that you are born again. I, I would say, no, not yet. Till Thursday night. Uh, it was like a thief had hit the door. I woke up suddenly and asked, what is that? A voice said, believe that you are born again. Until when I said, Lord, if you you okay? I'm born again. <laughs> I, I'm born again, but only for eight months. <laughs> I'm born again for eight months. <laughs> First, show me. If, if these things work, that was Thursday. Saturday, I backslid. I, thing, I went back in everything. Sunday. On a Sunday, a little girl that he was family the village, friend, uh, family she friend. She came for me and took me to, uh, to redeem the they, they preached the gospel of giving. <laughs> and she did not touch me at all. But when we are going out, there is a girl, my friend. I saw her. <laughs> Do you come here? I'm born again now. Are you born again too? I said, I'm coming. Are you born again? 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 Are you born
But brethren, this lady gave a testimony. How the Holy Spirit came upon her. And she prayed for somebody and got healed. When she went to give thanks, the Holy Spirit came upon her again. And within me, I said, Lord, now I'm really born again. I'm not giving you any condition, but I'm really later. A week's later, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. But when I got filled by the Holy Spirit, after a month I started preaching. Two months I opened the first church. Church of Uganda, that's where we started it. In two months, I had his fasting seven days with the pastor. Fasting seven days without even water. Every month I would give in one week. But by, by the end of one year, the Lord had already taken me out of business. He did not want me there. He had healed the ulcers. This thing had been healed. And had given me a new vision. I was going to serve the Lord. And he told me I will make you move in the nation. And I will use it to touch nations.